Well, I suppose the vision, I think it's, it's, it's pulling everyone from all over the place together. And it's, it's, I think I, I always think of these things as, as a kind of a little a club. That you kind of come together and then you squeeze ideas and then take them back. And, uh, uh, and it also gives people like me a fairly small company and maybe some relatively niche ideas to actually allow those ideas to, to, to talk to many, many people about them. And, and then, you know, there's a, sometimes there's a spark that's taken forward from that. So they're cool places for that, you know, they're, they're cool things. There's the bigger picture, and then I think there's the kind of minutiae that, that uh, a lot of us have got small ideas that might work, you know, so, uh, so it's good for that. For me, it was the drive to just make better, better places. It wasn't really the bigger picture initially, it was much more about people living in spaces where the green space was so poor, it was so uninspiring, and it was so unfair that they should tolerate that level of quality in comparison to the richer parts of the city. You know what I mean? And it, it shouldn't have been like that. And it still is like that mostly. So I suppose for me it was more of a people thing. Um, and then once you improve the green spaces and once people engage with the green spaces then um, all sorts of other things happen. Things that are not related to plants happen. You know? and, uh, uh, and I think for me, again, the other big thing about the, the, just having a green space close to where people live it gives you space for people to grow food. And, 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 and coming from London and looking after housing in London, the mixture of, 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 of backgrounds and cultures is huge. And, and, and most of those backgrounds, and a big majority of those people, are interested in food growing. Um, but they've arrived in London, they've been given a flat, and then no one said to them, well, yeah, you could grow some food outside your house. You know, they, and they, they had to sit and look at a space that was just a bit of cut grass for years and years and years. So I think for me, the most exciting thing for me is, is, is the bigger picture comes on the back of that, I think. But for me, it's very much about giving people a bit of space and, a, and, and giving people access to what is their space that they never thought it was before. We have limited resources. I have a, in, on, on, the, on the housing, we have a, a, a fixed budget, like a, just a maintenance budget. Um, but you just got to get creative with that, within that budget and I think you can be creative on the, uh, what allows you to be creative is, is, is on the back of people talking to you. you know, so when you're working, when you're in that space, people come out, people talk to you and, uh, and then you can, you, you, most of the ideas we've had have re been a reaction to what people have suggested or what people have wanted I suppose, you know, because at the end of the day if you don't create the space for what people want then what's the point of well, why am you know why am I there? I don't live there. Why why am I dictating anything? You know, so I think it's 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 really cool to be in a community for a, a length of time where you start to build up these relationships and then you can change for, for, for what people want. You know. but most people, I think, just need to be given the opportunity. It's not that they can't, it's not that they can't do it or don't want to do it. It's just that they probably feel like they don't have the opportunity to do it. And I think as soon as you release that then you release a huge potential in communities. You know. I think plants, plants and green space are, I think, just, I always think of them just as a tool, really. They're just a, they're, they're, although I love plants and I ended up, my work has come from the love of plants initially, but I've realized that plants are just a tool. Plants are uh, something you can just use to change places. And everyone knows, it's blatantly obvious, everyone knows that you feel better under a tree next to a flower meadow, well, you know, you feel better with that where, around you. And if you can put that habitat and that landscape right outside people's doors, and I think sometimes that's missed because there's a lot of emphasis on parks and big green spaces. Whereas if you can scale that stuff down and give it to people as they walk out their door and go to work every day, then you can, that's, I think that's a, a real, uh, really important. And that's always been underplayed because it's not very glamorous, it's not very sexy, those areas, they're small. Yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're often um, awkward spaces, but uh, if, if there was some more emphasis on those, I think people could, you can move into the bigger picture from that. Yeah. Well, I think the next step, you've got to change, you know, we've, we've talked, there's been a lot of talk of policy here, which is never very exciting for, for most people, but I think you have to force change. So from my experience of looking after green space, you, the, the way I think you have to do it is you have to change the documents that people work by. So when a, a contract goes out to tender, 
within that contract it has to have the community stuff, the, the green space, the important stuff. Uh, and as soon as you put it in that, the big companies and the people that haven't got a personal interest, they're forced into doing it. And then of course if the big companies are forced into doing that, then the people that work on the ground, who often get paid very poorly, who often have to do the same thing every day, if you can have those things that make people's lives better are also the make things that make people's work life better. You know, so when you the people when you're working on the ground, cutting grass, trimming hedges, you know, if you can allow time to look after flowers, look after borders, look after maybe some insect habitat, you realise these people have, have got into that industry. They have an interest in it, but it's dumbed down over the years because they're forced to do the same stuff. So you're not only improving the people that live there, you're improving the lives of the people that work there. I'd love to see, I suppose, is the same emphasis in and, and focus on the poorest bits of the city as there is in the richest bits of the city. Yeah, you know, and I think that, that, that's the least we could do. In fact, we really should send more on those areas, but you know, we, we, we should at least... Um, the public space that's there is their public space. It's their space, it's not our space. And uh, we should at least give the resources to allow them to have a decent space to live in. Thank you.